I want to talk to you today about instructions for the end of the world. Now, I know that seems like a doom and gloom, and it is. I said it is. I said it is. All right, you got your attention. Thank you, Jesus. Instructions for the end of the world. In 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11, it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity or love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards and the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This text was written by Peter himself. Mark transcribed it for him because he was not learned. And Mark was a secretary of the apostles. He also wrote and finished the book of Luke. Now John himself wrote his as he learned to read and write while he was in prison. The end of the world. It's a topic people don't like to hear. Because everybody's about their business. Everybody's doing on this earth what they need to do. And the word tells us that we are to continue to work as if tomorrow will come. But be ready and able to stand before the judgment seat of Christ when the rapture will take place. And we will be translated in the twinkling of an eye before the throne of Jesus. The beam of seat where we will give an account of the deeds done in our bodies. Whether good or bad. Now, that has nothing to do with salvation. I want you to know that. If you're raptured by the Holy Spirit at the time when it comes and the trumpet blast sounds, and at the last trump when you're changed in the twinkling of an eye and brought out of this world, I want you to know that you made it. You made it. Hallelujah. You're there. You don't have anything else to worry about. What the judgment seat is for is for rewards. What you'll receive for what you've done. Now the things of the past are under the blood. Can you say amen? Amen. Once you receive salvation, you become a new creature in Christ. A new creature. Hallelujah. Some of you are real creatures. (laughs) Me, I'm a creature. I'm a big ox in a glass shop. And I like rattling people's cages. I'm sorry, it's just the way I am. And if I hear something that the Lord needs to rebuke and he wants me to rebuke it, I will rebuke it. Hallelujah. I'm not the type of preacher that pulls punches. That's probably why the church ain't got 500 people. (laughs) Some of these big churches, lots of people, they don't feel that conviction. They don't want to feel conviction. They don't want to feel God's conviction of his Holy Spirit tugging on their hearts. I remember when my conviction was tugging on my heart. I was such a sinner. Oh, my God. Amen. That's my wife, by the way. And she knows me. Hallelujah. She knows who I am, and she knows me. Lately, our society today has become preoccupied with the end of the world. Have you seen some of the movies that go on? It was on Fox News, the image of Armageddon recently. It depicted pictures and drawings from multiple sources on their conception of what the end of the world would look like. But man doesn't know what God's going to do in his wrath. When God comes back to this world, he comes back 
in wrath. Those that are saved are saved during the rapture. Those that are going to be brought out in the midst of the tribulation will be brought out by the Lord and his angels. He will send them and put a seal on their forehead. And they will be brought out and not go through the great tribulation. When the abomination of desolation takes place and the Satan goes into the new temple in Israel and declares himself to be God, it is already over. And the last two to go is the two witnesses that come to the earth. Those that withstand Satan and his evil dominions. Causing fire to come upon them. But eventually they are killed. And the news shows that people, the evil people, dancing and clapping over their bodies. Their bodies are laid out so everyone can see. And at the end of three days... Guess what God does to them? He raises them from the dead like he did Jesus. And they are the last to be raptured. And it will be done on CNN, on camera. So all the world can see the glory of our Father. This world right now thinks it understands the end of the world. Multiple movies and TV shows have been created depicting the end of the world. Some by natural disaster, such as meteors, floods, earthquakes, new ice age, and combinations of all of them. Some by nuclear holocaust have showed that. Man can figure out how bad it can be. At least they think they can. But in the book of Revelation, if they've ever sit and really read it, or been taught it, then they realize that it's more than just somebody running around like a chicken with their head off. It's going to be such a disaster, and the wrath is going to be so great that men will go into caves and holler and say, fall on me, that I don't have to face the Lord Almighty. They will know who is doing it. And they will see Jesus come back in great glory. For he will burst the eastern sky. He has not come back yet. But he is coming. Can you say amen? Amen. Two times. One in the clouds to take us home. The second time. He'll come is with us. On white horses. Revelation 19. You ever studied that? Some think viral infections and rampant epidemics will take place and I think it will all take place at the same time 100 pound hailstones can you imagine trying to get in your house the only way you'll survive is probably a cave some place where it will withstand the 100 pound hailstones that burn with fire think about that for a moment 100 pounders in Texas they get 4 and 5 inch in softball size And it destroys everything in its path. Car windshields, cars, houses. Can you imagine a hundred pound what it will do? There are other sources than just the media about predicting the soon coming of the end of the world. Popular books today by modern authors have talked about the end of the world. Professors, scientists point to global warming. Boy, are they fooled. Radical climate change, space objects, or near-Earth collision courses. And the economists say today, we'll fall off a fiscal cliff. And soon the dollar won't be worth anything. And that could be true. As China right now wants to take over the world currency with a new coin. China right now is trying to do that. And not, you see, the, the dollar is the basis of all the world's economies. But one day it won't be. One day they will take over. And your dollar will be worth nothing. So if you're saving for the end times, let me tell you something. It don't work. It won't work. You can't take it with you. I've never seen a Brinks truck in a graveyard yet. As I did funerals, all I saw was happy people. And the reason is their own. I don't know. 
Some people are happy that their relative had died. Amen. And some are unhappy. But most later receive what they get in his will. And then the fighting begins. I kid you not. There is even a doomsday clock. Have you ever heard about it? And right now it's 20 seconds till midnight. They think they only have 20 seconds left to go because of what Russia is doing, declaring the nuclear battles that will come. Two days ago, the submarines of Russia were found off the coast of the United States surrounding us. One submarine can destroy this whole country. One. Their nuclear warheads have 20 warheads in it, and they fashioned every city and base in the United States. We're not mentioned in the Bible during the time of tribulation. The reason is we're destroyed. And with a remnant may get into the battle with Israel, but this country is totally destroyed. We are the Babylon of the world. And I'm going to tell you why. Our country has allowed things that no country should allow. Our cities will look like this when it's done. Every major city, I doubt they hit Marshall with one. But they may hit the base up about 40 miles from us. And that would get us anyway. They may hit Crane Naval Base in Indiana, where all the goodies are made. There is no place that I believe you could be safe unless you get a cave somewhere. And who would want to go through a nuclear winter? The Mayans predicted probably the most famous doomsday. The Mayan calendar ends on December 21st, 2012. Do you recall all the hubbub that went over that? But it didn't happen. The world didn't end. Then in 2000, they predicted the computer crash will kill us. And I remember the Lord speaking to me about that and telling everyone not to worry about it. God made it through man, and God can fix it. You see, the devil wants to convince you that he's going to destroy you any way he can. But I want you to know if you're in Jesus Christ, he cannot do it. You are a child of God. And if you're in a problem today, I want you to know that God can take care of it. But you have not because you ask not. Or you ask amiss. Or you heap it upon your own lusts. So people pray for a new Ferrari. And God says, I'm going to give you a Volkswagen. (laughs) But whether it is the media, books, or just conversation, people are talking about the end of the world right now. Events and facts, and they think they're right. Well, they are right. The world is coming to an end. And they are going to come to an end who are not in Christ. But that fear has not got in their hearts yet. Because the pulpit is not preaching it. The pulpit says, I don't want to be a fear monger. I don't want people to be scared when they come to church. Well, I want you to fear the Lord. Proverbs 1 says, the beginning of salvation is the fear of the Lord. His power and his might You can't even imagine what it's going to be. And I'm just thankful to the Lord that I will not be here. The signs are all in place right now. And the prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass today. Right before our eyes. The prophecies from Revelation about the end of this age are coming to pass right now. That's what it may look like. You see, if you've got a saved pilot and you're on the airline, 
He's going to disappear in the twinkling of an eye. And somebody better know how to fly that plane. Or it's going to be like that. There's going to be multiple wrecks. Where the Christians are taken and the cars keep going. In the twinkling of an eye. Gone. Can you imagine the chaos? The confusion? The aliens got them. They were beamed up. And yet they would believe something like that rather than the word of God. Today I want to give you some instructions to help you. We must come to the understanding that we are living in the last days, number one. You've got to prepare yourself and get ready because Jesus is coming. The end is coming. I don't know the day or the hour and only the Father in heaven knows. Not even Jesus knows the time. So we've got to be ready. Ready now. Every day. Prayed up. Filled up. Ready to go. Got to put on the garment of holiness for the spirit of heaviness. Can you say amen? We are closer right now. Every time we walk down the road, we get closer. Every day brings us closer. I don't know when. But as a pastor, my duty is to prepare your hearts for the time when Jesus will come. (laughs) Time marches on. The world continues to approach a day and an hour at the appointed time of God Almighty that this world will be destroyed. You know, he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. This heaven is going to roll up like a scroll. Now, I was talking to my son the other day. We were having a little Bible study. And I think it's when the poles shift. It's going to look like the, the world the scroll came and the stars disappear. The sun won't shine. The moon will glow red. Peter talks about that scripture we just read that the end is coming. He says in verse 7 of that scripture, but the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Everybody say sober. sober. That's not coming out of a drunken state. That's not what that means. And a lot of people don't understand what it means. It is the word sophronio in the Greek. And it means right here to be clear minded. To be sharp in your wits. Some people, when danger comes, they begin to panic and they can't think of what to do. And they get all anxious about the coming of the Lord. Some terms are used to describe the man with the legion, the demon. Do you remember he ran out and said, Jesus, what do I have to do with thee? And he was possessed and the Lord said unto him that he was found not in his right mind, but after Jebus cast out the demons, he was in his right mind. And he wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus sent him home to go and tell the Pharisees of what was done. See, anytime Jesus healed someone, it was the command under the law that he had to go to the temple and declare it to the Pharisees and Sadducees. He had to. It was the law. So Jesus sent them to the temple. And every time he did that, irony, anger, all that came back in their hearts. And they wanted to kill him. Isn't that something? They want to kill him for doing good. That boggles my mind. 2 Peter 1.10 says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never, what? Fall. Say never. never. Fall. Fall. That ought to comfort you. Yeah. Hallelujah. But there's a lot of people that won't make it. Only God knows the heart of a man. There'll be people in heaven and you think, wow, how'd they get here? They were awful. 
And there'll be others you're saying, where are they at? That didn't make it. You thought were so pious and righteous. The proper perspective to understand is the economy will not save you. You may have several PhD degrees, bachelors, masters. Education will not save you. You can be as smart as a whip and die in the tribulation. The military will not save you because all the bases will be destroyed at the first shot. There won't be an army. There might be a remnant, but not enough to thwart China and Russia. I know you don't want to hear this because you love the country. But this country is evil. It is full of sin. Last week, the Congress and the Senate okayed a bill that allowed not only homosexuals, but they put a law that you cannot touch them or say anything against them. As a matter of fact, if they come through the door, I can't ask them to leave, according to the new law. But when do I obey the law when it comes to the Lord and he tells me something different? Do you remember? I refused to close the church during the COVID. COVID. Mm-hmm. I'd have went to jail over it. I would have. When God tells me to close the doors, I'll close the doors. But not until then. Peter understood that. Because he wrote it in the scripture we just read. Right now we're closer than ever to it. And it's coming. It's coming. Prepare your hearts. It's coming. Are you ready to leave this world? Is there anything in this world that you think, I can't leave it. I can't go without it. If that's you, you're not going. God, I hate saying that to you, but it's true. I just had a baby, Pastor. Well, your baby's going. You better make sure you go with it. Time marches on each and every day. Number two, when you are worried and frantic, you need somebody to pray for you. Because you can't think straight. You can't do what you need to do if you're anxious or fearful. Fear is the opposite of faith. Can you say amen? Amen. Faith says, I'm going to make it. No matter what the devil says, I'm going to make it. But you've got to get a hold of your thoughts and bring those into the captivity of Christ. You've got to control what you think about. You can't let fear and anxiety come into your mind because the Word of God is always correct and your mind is not. If you're anxious or frightful, you need to pray or you need someone to pray with you. When you worry... It's easy to become distracted or bothered or controlled by your circumstances. Quite literally, you can't quiet your mind. Some of you have trouble quieting your mind at night. I'm going to say that again. Some of you don't sleep well. If that's you, I want to pray before you leave here today with you. The Lord says in the Psalms, the Lord gives his beloved sleep. The Lord wants you to be restful, ready to go in the morning. Come out in prayer and be renewed each morning according to Lamentations 3 verse 3. We are to get every morning get up and say, fill me again, Father, that I may take the day's fight. You've got to be warriors. You've got to put on the armor of God. You've got to withstand the evil. You've got to eschew it, go after it, and destroy it. I don't want no part of that. I'm not going to I'm not getting involved. That's the problem with this country. No one wants to get involved. Amen. Even the politicians have given up and the police departments have given up. They let them run rampant and destroy things. Because they have a right to do it. We need a president that's going to back up for law and order. Don't panic. 
pray. Keep it together so you can touch heaven for yourself and others. If you're anxious and fearful, you can do no good for anyone. You know why you're fearful? Because you don't believe the word. I'm going to say that again. You know why you're fearful? Because you do not believe. Oh Lord, I struggle with that. Evidently you need to get on your knees. Eight one of these little prayers. I'm talking some prayers in your closet that will bring about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One where you go into the Holy of Holies and you get whammed with His power. We don't take time to do that today. We need to take time to pray. Keep it together. When the one we are to pray because prayer is important. And some of us don't pray at all. And the Lord told me to tell you that. He told me to upbraid you over that. Your prayer life is horrible. Oh, I'm looking at you. <laughs> you know why? Because I know it's true. Well, I don't know how to pray. Come learn. Come learn. Come learn. It says in verse 8, and above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. When you pray for someone else, and you go through that with them, and you stand with them in the gap, their hedge is, again, protecting the, you and them. Guess what you do? You cover a multitude of your sins. Because it's love. If you love, you cover a multitude of sins. But you only have that if you have the Holy Spirit and you're saved. Because He's the gift. I said, once you get saved, He's the gift. Well, how do I know I have that gift? Because you will know. When He comes inside of you, He'll change your life. Glory. Fervent charity, fervent love. Fervent is the same word that is used to describe an athlete straining his muscles or a horse running at full gallop. You know how they pant and they start sweating? Not holding anything back. Love is stretched out as far as we can. It's love that goes on. And God is love. If you show love, it's because you have the Holy Ghost. If you show agape love and even are able to pray for those that you don't like, Somebody asked me one time, I got a problem with my neighbor. I said, you do? Yeah. What's the problem? They're awful. They talk awful. They act awful. And I said, bake them a cake. <laughs> How many heard me say that before? <laughs> bake them a cake. Take it over and say, God told me to bake a cake for you because he loves you. And you might find out that them people, the only reason they acted that way is they thought you were snooty. <laughs> Fervent is the same word you describe that. Not holding back. It's love, love, love. And it's the right kind of love. It's the love that overcomes your anger towards someone. It's the love that lets you Pray for them even though you don't like them. A true child of God will love all and forgive all. Do you pray for those? You know why you need to pray for them? Because if you have ought against anyone, the Bible says you won't go to heaven. Are you messing with your salvation? Over a stupid, pitiful argument you may have had? Well, I forgive them, Pastor. I'm just going to walk on the other side of the street if I see them. That ain't forgiveness. What if Jesus treated you that way? I just don't like them. Pray. Because you don't have enough love in your heart to get with them. And probably you should until you do. Fervent heart on fire. I love it. One that's on fire for Jesus. 
Jesus said they'll slap you in the face. You know what you're supposed to do? What does that mean? Does that mean we get angry and threaten them with a baseball bat? A gun? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now before I got saved, I'd seek them out. But not for love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every time someone wrongs you, we have a choice. We can deal with it, forgive it, and forget it. We can drag the person in the mud and be damn silly. The kind of love goes on loving even when others let you down. First there is love. Then there's forgiveness. Then there's forgetfulness. Then silence. Some of you, when you get ready to go to sleep, guess what's going on in your mind? The Holy Spirit is convicting you. That's why you can't sleep. That's why you toss and turn. The Holy Spirit's convicting you. Or He's trying to to get something for you to do. It comes in your spirit. You need to pray for this person. And I say, I don't like them. And the Holy Spirit says, that's why I'm asking you to pray for them. (laughs) Let me tell you something. It doesn't remove sin, but it covers it. This particular thing. It doesn't let the hurt or pain get out in the open. You see, it changes you. It changes you who you are. See, forgiveness is a life sentence. I want to say that again. Forgiveness is a life sentence in your life. You've got to forgive. You have to forgive. You've got to forgive to go to heaven. Well, I've got several people I don't like. What do I got to do? Bake them a cake. (laughs) You need to forgive. We need to forgive like Christ forgave. Not pointing our fingers, not talking about them. Hello, gossipers? Give hospitality without complaining. (laughs) <laughs> serve others as the need arises and you are able to take care of it not with complaining or grumbling giving hospitality to the homeless and shampoo bottles you see we can go around and give people food that need it we can give them laundry stuff some people only give them their prayers which is good Well, you wonder why they're not clean Hello? Giving to others might be through the offering here at the church, through missions, through special offerings, or the church which has a financial outreach through youth pledges. You see, it goes on to say that not with complaining or grumbling, but with a sincere, sincere desire to reach the lost. Verse 10, as we read it. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You're supposed to speak for Jesus. And Jesus would say, I don't like you, you stink. No, No, Jesus wouldn't say that, would he? No. No. And then you in radio land... Don't send me letters. (laughs) If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do with the ability which God giveth. Not all of us are on the same level. Some of us have walked with the Lord for 40, 50 years. And you newbies, you're not on the same level, but you will be if you continue in His grace. Let him do his ability as God giveth. God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and dominion forever, forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at these people working at the church. Ain't that nice? Taking up donations, canned goods to help people. I know you have a good heart, most of you in here. 
And the Lord loves you and he loves what you're doing. But we need to do more. I said we need to do more. Use your God-given gifts to bless the church. Every person in here has gifts from the Holy Ghost. Everybody say gifts. gifts. Say it again, gifts. 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 What good does it do to have a gift if you don't give it to somebody? Yeah. I'm hoarding it. I want all the gifts under my tree and you none. I covet the gifts. Hello. Some of you may have a pulpit ministry. Some may have a prayer ministry. I know some of you are prayer warriors. I know you are. Some of you might want to do a Bible study or have Sunday school classes. I don't know what your gifts are. I've asked people to come and talk to me. They want to be part of the church and do certain things. And you know how many people's come? Zero. I hadn't heard from anybody. I got my phone number on the church cards. I got my email I had there on the church cards. But no one's called me. No one said I want to teach a Bible study. No one said I want to be part of the YouTube experience. No one said that. So every week I pray to the Lord and ask Him what to do. And guess what? He tells me what needs to be done like preaching this sermon. If you've got an anointed gift, you ought to be using it. Some of you walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Guess what you do with it? You keep it. You keep it to yourself. Maybe you're in ministry and health. Maybe there's helpful things you can do at the church. Some people clean the sanctuary. Some uh, run the sound media. Some cook meals. Somebody does something because the presbytery can't do it all. I'm getting old. I'm going to say it again. I'm getting old. How many years have I been in this church? Think about it. I love it. But I can't do what I used to do. Me and Billy yesterday had to put that piano from there up there. Me and Billy did it. Do you realize how heavy that thing is? Me and Billy got it done. Thanks to him, more his strength than mine. I was a pusher. He was a lifter. <laughs> All the gifts are to be used to bless the church and to give God glory. Don't keep them, hoard them, use them. You see, even if you want to have a little Bible study. You want to be part of the YouTube experience? Come on down. We'll put you on camera. That ain't going to hurt you. You can be part of the group session. We'll do the whole group session. If you don't want to talk, all you can do is listen. But it's not bad. It's good. If you want to give your testimony, come and give it. Hallelujah. So are the instructions for the end of the world. I want you to stay clear-headed so you can pray. And do not panic. Pray. If you have anxiety, pray. Don't take the pills. Pray. I got to have another pill. (laughs) Forgiveness is, like I said, is life saying. Give the lost. Give to the lost without complaining. Give what you can when you can. Folks, God will tell you what to do. He'll tell you because he loves you. If you got two dollars, give him a dollar. And put your other dollar back in your pocket. As long as you're giving something from your heart. And you love him. There will be times when he'll say, give it all. And that will test your faith. Amen? Amen. Use your gifts to bless the church. Get involved in the church. Whether speaking or helping, your gift is important, needed, and should be used for the kingdom of God. Turn to Isaiah 34 in your Bible. I'm going to close with this today. I want to show you what God did through Isaiah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 34. Now I want you to put on your 
receiving ears. Come near you nations. Verse number one. Come near you nations to hear and hearken you people for the earth. Hear and all that is therein the world and all the things that come forth. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to a slaughter. Now Isaiah is prophesying the Armageddon battle. That's what this is. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Are you hearing this? And the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all the host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off the vine, and as the falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. It shall come down upon the Idumea, and upon the people my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs, the goats, and with the fat of kidneys of the rams. For the Lord had a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is in that day the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. That's oil, if you didn't know. And the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become what? Burning pitch. Burning pitch. I love this. It shall not be quenched day or night. It shall not be quenched day or night. The smoke there shall go up forever and from generation to generation it shall lie waste. Pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. This is the evil birds, by the way. Eagles and things like that. And the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon the line of confusion and stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. And all her princes shall be nothing. And the thorns shall come up in their palaces and nettles and brambles in their fortresses thereof. And it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered. Every one with her mate. Seek you out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. What this is referring to is after the battle of Armageddon takes place. All the wicked of the world will be destroyed. The blood shall run bridle deep to a horse's mouth. That's how deep the blood shall be in that valley. God is going to destroy them all. And guess what? You're coming back with him. You're going to be the warriors. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. Great is the army of the Lord. What do you think that's talking about in Joel chapter 2? It's talking about you being a warrior. Coming back. You better get on a warrior mentality right now. Well, the devil's beating me up pretty good, Pastor. It's because you're letting him. Get in your prayer closet. Get on your knees. I love it. Get in your prayer closet. Fight back with power. 
You have a 1-800 number to the Lord. All you got to do is pick it up. Hello? That you? Yeah, Jesus, my big brother. That you? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm, okay, I got this problem, see, and I know you're able to anoint me to go overcome it. Oh, I feel it already. Thank you, Lord. Goodbye. Are you saved this morning? Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you believe everything he said in that book? Yes. Come on now. Where's that unbelief coming from? Where's the doubt coming from? The devil. The enemy's trying to get you off course. But you don't want to take the time to pray. So you just let him beat you up. I've heard so many people call me. Oh, Pastor, I'm getting beat up. Did you pray about it? No. That's what's going to happen to the wicked. They're going to be utterly destroyed by the Lord. Utterly destroyed. Oh, I forgot the last one. That's when it's going to happen at the end. Right before the millennial starts. Where well, you're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. If you make it. The Bible says narrow is the gate. And few therein that find it. But wide is the gate to destruction. If you're following the crowd. You've got to be your own person. <laughs> it's important to know. To know without a doubt you're saved. It's important to have a communion with the Lord. It's important to pray every day. Where's your prayer closet at? Have you got a spot in your home to have a prayer closet? Mine's over the first coffee cup when I go. (laughs) I I drink half of it and go, okay, I'm getting there, Lord. (laughs) 